In this session, we are going to explain functional groups, which is Chapter 8 in the National Textbook. At the end of this session, you will be able to classify organic compounds into families based on their functional groups, write structural formulas of the functional groups, name the functional groups. You will also be able to define positional isomerism and functional isomerism. Let's review some terms. What's an organic substance? It's a substance containing carbon except for carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, carbides, carbonates and bicarbonates. What's a functional group? It's the part that determines the reactivity of organic substances. And what's a family of organic compounds? These are the compounds that have a common functional group. What are the families we will study this year? You have the alcohol family, the ether family, the aldehyde, the ketone, the carboxylic acid, the ester, acyl chloride, acid anhydride. Okay, let's start with the first functional group. You are given a table, and in this table we have the family, the functional group, the example, and the nomenclature. But we will concentrate mainly on the name of the functional group and the structure of the functional group. So the first functional group is the hydroxyl group for the alcohol family, and the structure of the functional group is a bond and then OH. The second group is the ether group, and it's for the ether family. And the structure of the functional group is an oxygen between two carbons. Now the carbonyl group for the aldehyde family. The structure of the functional group is C double bond OH or CHO, so it's CHO. For the ketone family, it's also the carbonyl group, but now the structure is a C double bond O between two carbons or just CO and two bonds. For the carboxylic acid family, it's the carboxyl group, COOH, or you may write it as C double bond O. OH, depending on whether you're writing the condensed structural formula or the structural formula. For the ester group, it's the COO or the C double bond OO functional group. For the acyl chloride family, it's the acyl chloride group COCl or C double bond OCl. For the acid and hydride family, as the name shows, it's coming from the dehydration of two carboxylic acids, and therefore you have the COO, C double bond O, or just COO, CO. This is a table that summarizes what we've talked about so far. So in the table you have the family, the functional group, an example, and the nomenclature. And you have all the families we've talked about so far. Other families and functional groups, you have the amine family, and you have the amino fu functional group, the amides, and the acyl amino group. Let's solve this application where we have to circle and name the functional group and then deduce the family in each of the following structures. For the first structure, the functional group is the carbonyl group and the family is the ketone family. For the second structure, the functional group is the acid anhydride group and the family is the acid anhydride family. And for the last one, the functional group is the hydroxyl group, and the family, therefore, is the alcohol family. 
To practice more on this part, you may solve exercises on page 203 in the National Textbook. Now let's move on to another activity. In this activity, we are going to compare two structures, two given structures. Keep in mind that to compare means to give similarities and differences. Both structures have the same number of carbons, same number of hydrogen, and same number of oxygen. This is why they have the same molecular formula. They have the same number of carbons in the main chain, which is four, and they have the same functional group, which is the hydroxyl group. However, the position of the hydroxyl group is not the same. In the first one, it's on carbon number one. In the second one, it's on carbon number two. In this case, they have different positions of the functional group. Since they have same molecular formula but different structures, we call them isomers. And since they have different positions of the functional group, we call them positional isomers. Now we will compare two other structures. And again, keep in mind that the verb compare means to give the similarities and the differences. One similarity between these two structures is that they have the same molecular formula since they have the same number of carbon, same number of hydrogen, and same number of oxygen. They also have the same number of carbons in the main chain, which is three carbons. However, they do not have the same functional group. In the first one, the hydroxyl group is the functional group. In the second, the ether group is the functional group. So they have different functional groups. And in this case, we call these two, of course, isomers because they have the same molecular formula but different structures, but also we call them functional isomers. Again, functional isomers, functional from the word function because they have different functional groups. Now we will go a little bit faster. We have two structures. Also, we have to compare these two structures. As you notice, these two structures, they have the same molecular formula. They have the same number of carbon, same number of hydrogen, and same number of oxygen. They have the same functional group and they have also the same position of the functional group which is on carbon number one. However, they do not have the same number of carbons in the main chain. So in the first one you have five carbons in the main chain whereas in the second one you just have four. So these are isomers because they have the same molecular formula but different structural formulas and we call them skeletal isomers since they do not have the same number of carbons in the main chain. A direct application on what we explained so far is this exercise where we have an organic compound of a molecular formula uh, C3H6O2 and it is worth to mention that it is monofunctional and it has a saturated non-cyclic chain. We're going to write all possible condensed structural formulas of A and for each isomer of A we're going to circle the functional group, give the name of the functional group and then we're going to name the family to which this isomer belongs. Let's start solving question one. Keep in mind that A has a molecular formula of C3H6O2 and it is monofunctional. The only monofunctional compounds with two oxygen atoms are esters and carboxylic acid. An advice 
is to start drawing the functional group. So for a carboxylic acid, you start drawing the COOH. And then you continue with the rest of the molecule. So you have three carbons, therefore you have here two carbons left. For the esters, you do the same. So you start drawing the C double bond OO or the COO group, and then you're left with two carbons. So you draw the two other carbons. To continue with the exercise, for each isomer, we're going to circle the functional group and give its name, and then name the family. These are the structures we drew before. So we're going first to circle the first functional group, which is the COH, and give the name, which is the carboxyl. And then for the other two, you notice that they have the same functional group, which is the COO, which is the ester group. Now for the second question, we have to name the family. So since you have here the carboxyl group, then it's the carboxylic acid family. And since here you have the ester group, then it's the family of esters. To summarize, keep in mind that positional isomers, these are the isomers having the same main chain, same number of carbons in the main chain, but they have different positions of the functional group. This is why we call them positional isomers. In functional isomers, these are the isomers of the comp or the compounds that have same molecular formula but different functional groups.